In this Vasari video, we're going to look at how to use parameters to start to build parametric objects within Vasari. We'll start off with just a couple simple concepts. Um, let's create a rectangle. So I went over to the modeling tab and I clicked the rectangle tool and you can see that level one becomes active and I can click and draw. And now I've got a rectangle shape on level one. I'll click the escape key to finish the rectangle command. And if I select it, uh, I don't really have any controls over this object. I can use the tab key on the keyboard to select one side and then numerically control one of the values, but those go away. They're not really parameters inside our mass. If we create a dimension by coming over to the modeling tab and using an aligned dimension and then dimensioning from this edge to this edge, now we've got a dimension and this dimension can be converted to a parameter. To get out of the dimensioning command I hit the escape key twice on the keyboard again. Now I'll select my dimension and you'll see a submenu here that gives us the ability to add a label to this dimension. So we'll click that and say add parameter. And we'll make this a family parameter and the name we'll just call it width for now. And let's make it a type parameter. We'll leave uh, that as it is for now and we'll click OK. Now you'll notice that we have width next to the name of the dimension and if we come over to our types which is this icon right here with the four cubes on it, we'll see that we have width as an available parameter. If I type 50 in there and click apply, that makes our object smaller. Let's set a dimension for the other direction. So we'll come over to our aligned dimensions. And we'll hit escape and we'll select this dimension and add a parameter and we'll call that length. And we'll make that an instance parameter as well. And we'll click OK. So now we have parameters for the width and the length of this object. To give us a bit more control and to not lose these when we do a create form operation, let's select them and in the properties dialog box convert them to reference lines. So where it says is reference line we will say yes it is a reference line and click apply. Now they've all become reference lines and if we select them and click create form we're going to get prompted with the option for a surface or a solid and I want a solid. So now our box can be driven by these parameters. If we double click on that parameter we can change the value. We can also do that from the types interface where we have our two parameters. Another way we can add a parameter is by selecting an object and adding a parameter to one of its properties. So if I select this volume you can see that we've got a positive offset. That's the direction in which it went up you'll also notice that there's a little button to the right of it. If we click that, we get prompted with an interface to select a parameter that drives that value. Rather than using my length or width, it's going to use parameter type length because it knows that's what it is, it's a length. I can add a parameter here. Let's call this height. And we'll click OK. And now if we come over to our types, we see that we've got a height value and that adjusts that. There's lots of other parameters we can make as well. We can make visibility parameters, we can make um, true, false, or yes, no parameters which enables uh, conditional statements. So an example of that might be if the height is a certain amount then the width gets smaller. All those things are available to you within the parameters dialog box. 
So that's an introduction to how parameters work. In some of the more advanced videos, we'll look at combining some of these techniques to make some more advanced parametric systems.